Problems with the Stuart Steam Pump, Part 1. What is wrong with it? In common with quite a lot of Stuart Steam models, this one has not really been run much. They're actually quite difficult to make, and I think this one was built as a display item primarily. Although it does run quite well using compressed air. The rattling noise you can hear is because it's sharing the check valve with the hand pump. One of the problems with the pump is that it doesn't run very well when it's using steam. I've steamed this pump in the past, in fact I made a video about it. But it wasn't linked to a boiler. I tested it using a pipe on the bottom inlet and the top outlet, just circulating the water to and from the tank. What you're about to see is a really common problem with steam pumps, steam pumps of all kinds. As I turn on the steam, the piston just goes to one end of its travel and stays there. I thought I would take it apart for two reasons, one to fix the fault and two to show you what's inside it. These small Stuart pumps are very clever, quite difficult to make and entirely different to the Southworth type. I've never been really thrilled with this design, to take it apart is more complicated than it first seems, so I'm going to partially dismantle the pump so you can see what's inside. Unfortunately, I really do think that to make this pump work properly under steam, it's going to have to come apart entirely. The block at the top is the steam chest, and this is more complicated than it first looks. I can't do much with it while it's sat on the baseboard of the steam plant, so here I'm removing the union nuts at the water side of it, and by doing this I'll be able to lift the pump off the main baseboard and work on it on the bench. I thought the thread of the water inlet was going to be never ending, but eventually the nut did come off. And once I'd released the bottom water pipe, I lifted off the pump and put it on the workbench. And here it is. The first thing to do is to remove the rear cylinder cover entirely. This specially shaped cylinder cover is held to the cylinder using four bolts, and then a fifth bolt secures it to the steam chest. The steam chest end cover is actually much more than a steam chest end cover. And here it is with the cover removed. As you can see, it's more complicated than you first think. This old oil is a bit of a mess around the piston, so I think I'll clean that off to start with. In this clip you can see the working parts. Obviously the bottom part is the piston in the cylinder. And in the steam chest from left to right is the shuttle piston and the shuttle valve. Unlike Southworth and other steam pumps which use slide valves, the Stuart pump uses a piston valve. More about that later. I'm going to attempt to remove the cylinder from the main casting. And as I'm doing this, I can't help but think how much easier it would be if it had a special long-headed bolt. Anyway, I got the bolts out in the end. But the cylinder didn't want to come out of the casting. So for this initial look at the pump, I'm not going to persevere with that. Once I'd taken the nuts off the four studs on the steam chest, I needed to remove the studs. After removing the valve rod gland nut and the two collars on the valve rod, I then had to move the entire steam chest rearward and upwards and away from the pump. Here is the steam chest in my hand, and as you can see, the shuttle piston is stuck in its cylinder. Here it is once I pushed it out. This shuttle piston is machined from stainless steel and it's very well machined, but it's too tight a fit in its cylinder. So what I did was, I put it in the lathe and removed some of the metal using wet to dry sandpaper. Not a lot, just a small amount. And when I tried it back in the shuttle piston cylinder in the steam chest, it was a lot freer. One problem, which is a bit of a contradictory problem, is that these pumps are difficult to make, so they're normally made by very good engineers. But sometimes the engineering is too good. What I'm doing here is replacing the two bolts that hold the assembly into the casting. I'll feature more about this in another episode. This clip shows the fact that there is a gasket between the cylinder cover and the cylinder at the front end of the pump. And it's not in very good condition, so using a Stanley knife blade, I removed it. The annoying thing is, the gasket around the main part of the cylinder cover seals the cylinder perfectly. But this piece of gasket material is no good at all. I need to discard it and make a new gasket. The problem is, I do not have any gasket material as thin as this. 
So for this time only, when I reassemble the pump, I won't be using a gasket so it's going to leak, but all being well, it should work. Time to reassemble the pump. This part that I'm looking at is the piston valve. I'm currently fitting it back into position. These two collars on the valve rod are to limit the travel of the piston, and at the moment I'm tightening them up, leaving a bit of a gap in between. The position of these two collars will need to be set very accurately to stop the piston from hitting the end of the cylinder. This clip shows me replacing the bolts on the end cylinder cover. Here's a top tip, when you're doing a job like this, don't shear off the bolts, because if you do, that is a major problem. Just nip them up sufficiently to hold the components in place, and don't go any further. Here I'm injecting some oil into the steam chest, because I'm going to give it a test run. That seems to be fine. Interestingly though, the oil coming out of the exhaust port is now quite black. And as you can see, where there isn't a gasket, it's leaking. It appears to run OK, but I'm going to show you something. Here, I'm just tightening up the bolt at the front. Now watch what happens when I connect the compressed air. The piston moves to one end of its travel, and no matter what I do, that's as far as it goes. So, what's the problem? The problem is simple. Tightening the bolt distorts the steam chest. Once I slacken off the bolt, it works again. Here is something interesting. Because this pump uses a piston valve as opposed to a slide valve, you can connect steam or air to either the inlet or the outlet. But remember, the steam inlet is the one that goes into the steam chest, not the other way around. As you can clearly see, this pump has a lot more power when I connect the steam line to the inlet rather than the exhaust. although it does run a lot faster and a lot smoother when I apply the air line to the exhaust. In this clip I'm adjusting the collars just to limit the amount of travel on the piston because I don't want the piston to smack into each end of the cylinder. This is quite a delicate operation and if the collars are not in the right place the pump will not run well. To demonstrate this, in this sequence the collars are not in the right place, so the pump becomes erratic again and occasionally sticks at the other end of the cylinder. At this stage I also found out that the main arm was moving on the shaft, that's with the extreme percussion that's been going on. When you tighten this you have to be very careful because it's pulling a tapered sleeve against the piston rod to secure it and if you over tighten it you will shear it off. Now the pump's starting to run more like it should, apart from the leaks, I'm going to try it on steam again. But that's it for this episode. Stay safe and healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.